This flagship Jeep Talk Show episode is brought to you by Get Where You're Going, Then Keep Going. That, it's almost like, it almost sounds like get the hell out of here, but uh, that's not get what we're doing. Out. <laughs> yeah, hey, what are you doing here? Just keep going, move along. You nothing to see here. Nothing to see. <laughs> Gear, parts, accessories built to explore well beyond where off-road goes off-grid. Get real deals on performance parts and off-road accessories at realtrack.com. Hey, on tonight's episode and our news stories, would you like to be CEO of Stellantis? I don't think Pick I'd me. I, I don't think I'd want to be that job in that job Not right, right now. now. <laughs> <laughs> so, but maybe you can uh, buff up your uh, your resume, Natalie, and because uh, you're gonna have a little time uh, to uh, to get hired. And uh, then so. we're also going to cover the ten best Jeep models ever built. Oh my god, ever. And Natalie, I'm not, gonna, about it. I'm not going to say <laughs> this. You, what are you going to talk about? <laughs> What am I going to talk about? Yeah. So I found out this week, everybody, that size really does matter. Well, I'm surprised it took you this long to find out, but, but <laughs> well, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. It's a big week. <laughs> oh, I see what you did there. All right. So a uh, must have for your Jeep coffee. <laughs> no, it's not going to run the engine, but damn it. it the, the nut behind the wheel needs that. We always do, don't we? Mm hmm. So hi, guys. I am Natalie from Highland Off Road, where you dream it and we build it. <laughs> All right, so Stellantis begins search for a successor to CEO Carlos Tavares. I think it's right. I think I pronounced it. I, that I right. think you're right. Yeah, I think I pronounced like it that right. So uh, Stellantis said on Monday, this was Monday last week, it has begun a search for a candidate yes. to succeed CEO Carlos Tavares, whose contract is set to supi uh, expire <laughs> in 2026. So this isn't like right away. I mean, it's not. So you were right. We have some time, right? Yep. You got some time. You can uh, uh, do a little graft, you know, do some uh, some tips here and there to <laughs> yes. see if you can buy your way into this position. Learn I just, a little um, bit more from Mike, you know, like here we are. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just, uh, I can't help, you know, um, I've never been able to, I never got to meet Jim um, Morrison. Um, yeah. And, but Chris... Uh, Jeep Talk Show Chris met, has, has met him several times. Uh, I have talked to Jim Morrison here on the show. Yeah. Great, great interview. Great guy. He's great. He's a jeeper. I mean, you could just yes. tell 100%. I've, uh, I've interviewed some CEOs that are uh, not jeepers, uh, or if they are, they hide it very well. Right. And, and you it's can, all about the business, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, they just, they don't, they don't have that excitement. You know, you and yeah. I and, and many of our listeners, if not all, are very excited about Jeeps. And it's just like, we are. I, I don't care. What, tell me, let, show me, rub it on me if you have to. I don't care. I just want to be close to it. <laughs> so, exactly. Yeah. And, and that's, that's the excitement of being a Jeep owner and taking it off road. And of course you may not take it off road. You just may uh, drive it down the street, uh, go to parades uh, when kids are sick and you, you get in a parade and you drive down a neighborhood and the, and the kid just Those loves it. Things. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, There's and, a jeeper for everyone. I think that's something that is so special about this community. I really learned that this week too. Doing an event, there mm -hmm. literally is a jeeper for everyone. Yep. Uh, ducking. I mean, that's another big thing. Yeah. That is a <laughs> uniquely Jeep. Uh, I mean, it's been co-opted on several other platforms now. Uh, but uh, so uh, you know, it's. I, I wonder if I don't know who it was that uh, wasn't friendly to Jim while he was at Jeep. But I'm wondering if it's this guy. <laughs> I wonder. Yeah, I maybe don't not know. directly, but you know, like indirectly. Yeah. And, and uh, I think it would be, and I don't think there's any way in hell Jim would even take the job, but it'd be really cool if they said, you know, we screwed up. Numbers are really bad. Uh, we'd like to, to have you come back. Um, they, uh, they need a, an American running this thing, uh, at least for the Jeeps and the Dodge Ram, because I don't think the Europeans get it. I don't think and it is such an American icon. Mm -hmm. So I do believe you might be onto something there. Um, I did meet, I got to meet Jim last year at four fest and he was lovely. We took, we chatted for about 60 seconds, which probably felt more like 60 years to him because he had to talk to me, but um, it was amazing. He was just such a great guy and you never know. You never know. So there's a lot of time in between right now. And um, I think it's kind of interesting, you know, contract expires in 2026. So you already know you're not going to have your job. I think that's kind of an interesting twist. And, and I don't know. Um, I guess they could let him out of the contract. You know, if he started, if he started looking around and, and he could uh, find another company, he could uh, make them lose uh, 20% sure. year over year. 
Uh, <laughs> For sure. As our resident fake lawyer, yes, they can break the contract early. They just have to pay a little bit. <laughs> I, I am not a real lawyer, but I play one on the Jeep Talk Show. I like I that. I do. <laughs> so, um, uh, I mean, I don't I don't like to see see bad things happen to anybody. No. Uh, yeah. You know, absolutely not. Uh, and and I don't know that there, anybody would be able to do any better um, with Jeep right now. Um, yeah. With all the stuff that's going on. Uh, you did see where they dropped the uh, the the interest rate a half a percent, yeah. right? Right, half a percent. Um, you know, a friend of mine just bought a Jeep, a fully loaded Gladiator, it is used. It has about forty five thousand miles on it, mm-hmm. but it looks brand new. Oh my gosh, twelve percent interest. Oh my god! Right now, and I was just like, oh Eric, like I'm so excited for you. It's his first Jeep, but oh boy, like it just it shocked me. It shocked me. Um, yeah, he, and he's going to wheel it actually next weekend, uh, fully I stock. I so. didn't think it was up to eight percent. I didn't think it was twelve percent. His is twelve percent right now, and so he's hoping maybe in the year he can refi, which I hope so too for him. But um, he's, you know what, the the joy is there right now, and he's blinded by love. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Well, as long as he can afford it, and like you say, refi yeah. in a year, and then it won't won't yeah. be so bad. Um. So um, the the automaker, however, added there is still a possibility. Tavares is staying on longer. Maybe he just needed some on the job training. Maybe he just needed his ass kicked. Yeah. <laughs> <that too. laughs> oh man. Um, uh, so, you know, n- n- nothing. I don't mean to be hateful to you, Carlos. I'm sure you're doing a fine job uh, and it's probably just not, uh, it's, it's a, well, I think it was when the dealerships, the owners of the dealership started, uh, complaining about, uh, uh, the amount of inventory they had and, and kind of yes. getting jerked around uh, from uh, Stellantis uh, that uh, this, this is what happened. Um, I don't know what the answer is other than um, make the Jeeps uh, cheaper and mm-hmm. uh, stop uh, pushing the EV stuff. Um, yes. Stop doing the hybrid stuff. I mean, you, you, you can have them. That's fine. But um, just make a damn good Jeep. Oh, and the Ram pickups. Ram pickups are generally really good trucks. They are. Just make a good damn pickup. Yep. I agree with you 100%. I wonder if that EV's in our top 10 list. No, I bet you it's not. Mm. Um, <laughs> I bet you it's not. So, um, I don't know. I mean, we're going to have to see what happens here. Uh, I, I yeah. don't like anybody being out being out of a job. Uh, I, I'm sure he'll be just fine, though. Uh, right. and, and I would like to... Uh, I, I don't know. There's... I guess this is what you see whenever they're when the the inventory's up and sales are down. Uh, people yeah. people have to be um, um, sent all along their way to bring somebody else in. And I think a lot of times it, it, it's just a knee jerk reaction. Uh, it it's not necessarily doing anything. Uh, there's nobody out there that is a has the magic bullet. Uh, it's there just isn't. it's not right now. It's just <laughs> you know trying to make people feel like the the, the shareholders and stuff. Uh, feel like something's going on. Um, I agree with you. And I, I can't help but think that uh, the uh, having a company that's publicly traded is not good for long term because not. you can't make long term plans because you may not be there. <clears throat> no, exactly. And it's almost like sports teams too. I mean, yep. if you're not doing well, like right now, NFL's kind of, I know for us, the Bengals, we're struggling and everyone's calling for whose head, the head coach. So it does start at the top. Um, and right now we're all, it's struggling. Jeep is just struggling. Yeah. I mean, everybody loves a winner and they don't like a, yeah. a loser. So no, definitely um, not. God, it's just, it's tough. It's tough. I mean, I want to see Jeep do good. I don't want to see Jeep go out of business. Uh, I, I, and I'm not saying that's what's going to happen here, but you can't, uh, can't keep going forever losing money. Correct. You can't because that forever really will end. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. And we need, them. we need our Jeeps guys. Absolutely. Atlanta, um, get it together. And, you know, and speaking of Jeeps and we need our Jeeps, um, whenever we did this story, I think it was on the last uh, uh, flagship episode, we did a story yeah. about uh, the 2025 uh, Jeep Wrangler not mm-hmm. uh, not having an automatic available uh, if you, it was a 3.6 V6. It made, oh, yeah, it made yeah. absolutely no sense to me unless they're trying to keep people from buying Wranglers. Um, not a lot of people out there know how to drive a standard. And, of course, we they know don't. that... Uh, that they the Jeeps had a lot of problems with standards since they uh, came out with the JL uh, with the uh, the flywheels blowing up the oh. it's, yeah it's just it, it, they have a, an issue uh, with those things and they're gonna or, you know the question is are they fixing the the clutch and the transmission on the 2025 
Uh, otherwise, that's going to be a really short, uh, short trip. Oh, they what a waste! Yeah, <laughs> what a waste again. Yeah. But uh, I mean, we don't know. Uh, but I will say this: uh, Jeep Talk Show team member Bill told us on Discord server today, Stellantis may be manipulating the early 2025 model year supply to a mm-hmm. less popular configuration and colors. I, I was not aware of the colors uh, to drive new buyers into older inventory. And this makes sense Ooh. based on what we were just talking about. Yeah. Um, so the, the older inventory has piled up on dealer lots and this will help clear out older inventory and help, help dealers with not having to discount as heavily on those older uh, model years by pushing buyers in that direction. So it is a bit ingenious. Uh, it I, is. Mean, I mean, it's not like uh, companies don't manipulate the, their, uh, their customers. They do. Um, you, you know, sales, um, uh, you know, gee, that dress doesn't make your butt look big. Any you do or say anything <laughs> right. to make the customer happy exactly, and make the sale. So that's part of we sales. We only have one left, you know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, so I can, I can understand it, but it, it makes me kind of feel bad. If it makes me feel like uh, Stellantis is screwing us. It does. Yeah. I, I mean, it's not illegal, I'm sure. Um, no, definitely not. I mean, uh, so anyway, well, we got to uh, get rid of it somehow. That older inventory has got to go at some point. Well, I like deep discounts. <laughs> I do too. I like the idea of deep discount. Pockets, deep discount. You know. So uh, I'm sure we will see. Uh, and the, the the information from Bill continues. It says uh, uh, that he's sure you will see the return of V6 automatic option later in 2025 model year. So if you were planning on buying a Wrangler in 2025, you might want to wait. Uh, yeah. until the end of the year if you don't have to have a 2025 you may be able to get a really good buy on an older uh jeep uh and you know that because they they want to get it off the lot um yeah and I, I was and i suspect that if they are coming out with a 2025 uh wrangler with an automatic right right at the time they do that or right before they do that, that would be the best time to get there to get the old inventory yes. off the lot. <laughs> so here's a, a, a girl question. I, sure. I think I said that, but do you think, do you think an automaker would ever skip a year if they're sitting on so much inventory? Oh my God. Like, I never would you ever about just that. skip a year instead of just trying to reinvent it? Like well, I feel like right what, now they're trying to reinvent. So what, why not? What would that do to the UAW workers though? I know that's the other problem. Yeah. So you really can't, what would you they, have to always keep going. So what, it's just, what would they do? Like, I mean, they could put a yeah. pause on all the plants. You know, they, they do do that. Yeah. Man, that would just be, it makes sense. I mean, sometimes it's, I mean, I just feel like, you know, what if, what, what do you do when you're sitting on all this stuff? You have to think that that would really hurt stock prices though. Oh, it'd be horrible. It's it, not a good idea. I'm just saying, what if? <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. But I mean, it's one of those things where then they may even have thought about this uh, and just said, no, we can't do that. It would be, be too much uh, backlash uh, from um, yeah. many, many things. Oh, um, yeah. God, could you imagine all those workers just not having anything to do? Um, It'd be awful. Yeah. Um, awful. Don't so, do it. <laughs> yeah, no, we're not suggesting that. And if, yeah. if they do do that, I didn't suggest it. Natalie did. Uh, <laughs> all right. So. <laughs> I got broad shoulders. I can throw you under the bus. Um, Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Right, so now it depends let's... on how wide you know those bus tires are. So we'll see. <laughs> oh, nice, uh, oh. nice segue. All right. So uh, the, uh, the, the I thought this was interesting. I, I did a little research today for uh, some Jeep news, and I saw uh, right away. I saw ten best Jeep models ever built. I went, son of a bitch. That is perfect for the flagship episode. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I knew I was just thinking about that today, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so this is according to Car Buzz, and uh, th- so I don't know that this is accurate how they came up with these numbers, but you can go over there and, and read their uh, their article, and and maybe they tell you that. Uh, we're just going to go through the uh, through the the list of uh, models here. So not surprisingly to me, because I am a Jeep Cherokee owner, uh, I, I have it in the garage. One of these days, I'm going to back it out and uh, drive it again. Uh, but the Jeep, number <laughs> one, one Jeep Cherokee XJ. XJ. <laughs> they they built uh, 2.7 million of them. Uh, everybody says 3 million, but it was 2.7 million, at least according to the uh, the old internet, the old Google. 
and um, uh, that was uh, that was number one. So number two, I was a little surprised about. Are you surprised at this one, Natalie? I mean, t- yes, because of the price point, honestly. But and it's, um, and it's so think- new. It's so new, and um, just so everybody's wondering, what what do we what do you all think it is? Oh, it's that beautiful Rubicon three ninety two Wrangler, um, you know, which I dream about every day. But uh, I cannot believe that that's number two in reality. Yeah, um, I mean, it's it's a nice build. Uh, uh, I'm fortunate enough to know we talked about Jeep Talk Show yeah. uh, team member Bill earlier. I'm fortunate enough yes. to know somebody that has one, and uh, he actually started it up for me one day. Oh. Oh. It's the best. <laughs> your, your EV will never sound like that unless it has a soundtrack. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you got the buttons right. <laughs> All right. So uh, number three is the, and let's switch these go, going back and forth, Natalie. I didn't think yeah. about that before. So uh, I'll, like I'll, 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 we'll like do, I'll do the odd ones, which makes sense. And then you'll do the yeah. even ones. All right, so the uh, the Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk. If I was going to buy a Grand Cherokee, and the Grand Cherokees are absolutely beautiful, I they just are. don't I just don't look at it as an off road vehicle. And if I'm buying a Jeep, I'm buying an off road Jeep. Yes, but these things are screamers, <laughs> and it would be fun to kick ass on everything except a uh, Tesla uh, exactly. with the Trackhawk. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Um, and then next on the list, guys, we have the Jeep CJ2A. I mean, I can see it. It's definitely in the top five. Yep, top absolutely. Five. And then yeah. the the Jeep Wagoneer. Now, not the new one, but the not one the from one. Uh, like the, the late 60s, early 70s, I believe. The SJ. Yeah. It may it may have gone into the 80s. I don't recall. Uh, but I feel like the Abercrombie Jeep... loved using them in their ads. <laughs> oh, the <laughs> cool, cool looking vehicles. Absolutely. <laughs> the cool kids. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, what, what we got for number six? The Jeep Grand Wagoneer L. So that's the new one. That is the new one. I'm not really a have fan. You, have you seen those things? Yeah, we rented one on one of our trips. It's like our get around vehicle. And it was just okay. I hate to say it. Like, but, I'd rather just get a Tahoe at that point. Yeah, but I mean, they're huge and they carry a lot of people. And, they and, do. and Jeep has not had that. I mean, if you wanted to do something like that, yeah. you got a minivan, a full-size van, yeah. uh, or, <laughs> yes. uh, or a Suburban. I mean, I'd always, always thought, I no, I was driving through Texas, uh, central Texas, small towns, and uh, we drove by a Suburban on 44-inch tires. And this would have been back in the 80s. Whoa. Whoa. It was Whoa. the baddest ass Suburban Whoa. you've ever seen. Come on, Grandma, we're going to IHOP. Right <laughs> Lots of size jokes right now, you know what I mean? That's right. <laughs> well, some of us don't, uh, don't laugh at those jokes, I'll just let you know. Oh. It's a bit of PTSD. <laughs> Next on the list, Tony. Yes, the Jeep Gladiator. Now, this is the original. I don't think there was one before this. The Jeep Gladiator, the SJ. So also in that time frame, 60s, 70s, 80s. I don't know exactly what. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, those are really cool. And I think that uh, Jeep should have put a Gladiator nose on the the new generation Gladiators. So Ooh, that would have been cool. Just so it would look different from uh, the Wrangler. As I always say, you're driving a Gladiator and you get a Jeep Wave. And you then do. And then when they get alongside you, they go, oh, that's the, that's a damn Gladiator. Like, that's uh, that's not a Wrangler. That's not a real <laughs> Jeep. Oh. And you can't, you can't retract that wave. <laughs> you can't. You cannot bring it back. <laughs> Next on the list, we have the Jeep Gladiator Mojave X. Now, what's the X? Which one's that? Um, was this one of the original Mojaves? I don't kind know because you know the like the on the TJs the the, yeah. the Wrangler TJ uh, X models was the low end model, and I can't imagine it that was, this yeah. one is the low end model. So yeah. I don't know. I don't know what I that know. is. I wonder if that's X for extreme. Maybe if someone could write in on the Discord, let me know. Yep, teach me something, guys Dis- and girls. Discord, go over to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact and find out a bunch of ways to contact us. All of yeah. them, actually. Oh, there it is. There it is. Oh my! Oh, it made the list, didn't it? Jeep Wrangler Four by E. Oh boy! So it, it's actually done very, very well. We we have a, a Jeep Talk Show listener uh, that's uh, routinely in the Discord server and uh, uh, on the Zoom meetings on our roundtable. Uh, he loves it. He loves his four oh, by. Yeah. Uh, it's I, not jeeping with Jim, is it? 
<laughs> no, it's that's, that's my local four by e guy. It, so it, it's Matt. You remember the guy that came up and spoke with you that uh, recognized your voice? Yes. That, oh my god. That, oh that's, yes. That's Hi, that's Matt. Matt. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> Matt's uh, Matt's Jeep. Uh, his wife's Matt gets to to drive it and work on it. Hi, Mrs. Matt. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would like the four by e a lot better if the motor was a V6 is was yes. the 3.6 liter, not that two liter yeah. thing. Um, yeah. and I, I understand they're trying to do what they're trying to do, but, uh, I'd like the idea where I have the battery option, but I can still drive it with the full power of the, the, the 3.6. Absolutely. Uh, so, but that's not the way it, what the way it worked. No, or a 392 power. Let's just go there. <laughs> <laughs> you run that generator and sound oh, good man. at the same time. Right. And then last but not least in the top 10 is, drum roll please, can you find a button maybe? Sure, the Jeep <laughs> Willys MV, not, not to be confused with Michael Bailey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's close to it, that's close to it. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, I believe this is the original uh, Jeep, the one that too. won the war or helped win yes. the war. I mean, the soldiers driving it were probably the more, uh, more, more, doing more of the winning than the, the Jeep was, but they needed to get to the fight and uh, get from point A to point B. So I, of course it's got to make the list. I don't it know that it, I don't know that it should be number 10 though. You think it should have been on the, more on the short list? I think, yeah, I think it should have been up towards the top. It because, could have been number one. Because I mean, of, really because like, of all it did. Uh, I mean, yeah. we'd be, I mean, I don't know about you, but I can't speak German. Uh, so I would not like being yeah. speaking German right now. No. All right, so Overland Expo Mountain West 2024, off-road trends you need to know about. Colorado is a perfect backdrop for epic sights and sounds of Overland Expo Mountain West. Oh, you know, uh, the, the group of uh, from uh, the Jeep Talk Show recently went yeah. to Colorado, did a Colorado trip, and uh, oh, cool. beautiful, beautiful sights. And, and I mean, I did, I've only driven through a part of Colorado, just a little corner yeah. going to Moab, and it, it was gorgeous. So oh, sure. peeling through row after row of this country's best off-road camping and overland adventure vendors shows what the love of the outdoors and the centennial state is stronger than ever. From brand new vehicle manufacturers in the industry, uh, Star Wars to, to the uh, Star Wars, no, Star oh. Wars, <laughs> Hogwarts, uh, hey. I, I'm the, I'm, my brain's going all over the place. To the best gear for heading deep into the backcountry. Overland Expo Mountain West has something for every person who feels the pulse of nature deep in their soul. Uh, Overland Expo provides a snapshot into the heart of the off-road industry. What's new, what might be the next big thing, and what will always draw a crowd of adventure seekers. Here's what the new uh, what's new in the world of outdoor adventures. You can see what's new in the outdoor world of yeah. adventures by going to realtruck.com slash blog and look for, just do a search for Overland Expo Mountain West 2024. And uh, thank you, realtruck.com, yes. uh, for being a uh, repeat uh, sponsor here for the, uh, the Jeep Talk Show. As a Jeep Talk Show listener, go to realtruck.com and check them Absolutely. out. Absolutely. For sure. They're wonderful people, guys. Got to finally meet them in person That's at right. Smoky you, Mountain. It was so exciting. I really, I fangirled. I really did. I was like, oh my God, real truck. You, you grabbed one, put them in a headlock and uh, they, uh, they uh, were happy to speak with you. <laughs> Just in case you guys didn't know, we are on YouTube as well. And this is all being recorded. So definitely a lot of action going on on the camera. I can't stop moving. Tony's favorite. Oh, moment. you it's have to watch the YouTube frame. thing. Yeah, it's every, I'm everywhere. No. So I just did a headlock. You know, it's great. And my, I've been drinking coffee this whole time. That, my Zion mug. that poor cat. I just can't believe you I put did. a headlock on your cat. That's, I did. <laughs> that's just cruel. Uh, that's, so definitely check us out on YouTube. That's a PETA. YouTube. That's a PETA offense right there. <laughs> From the mind of Nikki G. Hey, this is Nikki G, and I just caught the uh, episode, The Cowboy in a Kilt, which I still think yeah. sounds like a 70s cop show. And if the network picks it up, I would like to play the role of Huggy Bear, please. But uh, <laughs> Chuck, you talked about how your change of springs and the ride of your Jeep is not what it used to be. Uh, I invite you to borrow this clap out XJ for a week, drive it for a week, then uh, you'll appreciate how smooth your Jeep really drives. Heck, uh, you'll appreciate how smooth your lawnmower handles at highway speeds <laughs> after driving this thing for a week. 
That's not why I'm calling. I'm calling the tow. That's not why I'm calling. Damn it, I almost did it one take. <laughs> That's not why I'm calling. I'm calling to ask, is butt cheek spelt one word, or do you have to spread it out? <laughs> Can't go wrong with a potty joke. All right, boys and girls, catch you later. Have a good one. Bye. <laughs> That's the that's the one you want to tell when you're in the public restroom and the, there's people oh, no. on either side of the stall, but between you. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Like it <laughs> caught me off guard because I was like, "Where is he headed with this?" Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's that's the best the joke where you can't see it coming. <laughs> yes, you, you know it's gonna go. It's gonna be ah, oh, but you just you don't know how or why. It's just gonna be one of those. It's one of those. All right, so uh, coming up on our next interview episode, Mark Berman uh, with thetopbrella.com. you got to check this thing out. Uh, uh, yeah. Go over there, the, the top brella, and have a look. And the, the idea here is, I didn't, I didn't get it at first until I did the interview. Um, I, was, uh, I didn't understand uh, how you can install this thing in three minutes, and it just covers the back of the Jeep. Well, the, the JL, the JLU, you can ride around with the, the windows, the back window, uh, I mean the side windows and the back window off, and then you still yeah. have the top. But mm -hmm. it's almost a guarantee you're going to run into a rainstorm. Yeah. <laughs> I just checked it out. This is really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he says it only takes about three minutes uh, to grab it and get that thing on there. Uh, and it, it's going to save you so much time uh, cleaning afterwards from the, the yeah. water. Uh, that's going to build up in your Jeep. So it's not a complete cover for the Jeep. It's just like for the back part uh, where the windows and the back uh, back glass is. And it also means you don't have to take that stuff with you and don't have that's to worry right. about it getting stolen or blown out of the Jeep, so on and so forth. Yeah. Oh, I've had that happen. Lost a window on the highway. Didn't know it. <laughs> I don't recommend that, everybody. <laughs> Make okay. sure your windows are on. <laughs> okay, so we threatened uh, a, a a nice talking point that you had that you wanted to share with our listeners, uh, and uh, it's like uh, size matters. And, size and does you know, matter. It doesn't matter. I'm from Texas, so everything's <laughs> bigger in Texas. It and, is and it, bigger. And it doesn't matter how much you say. Uh, <laughs> it's it's important. No, it's not important. Uh, okay, okay, that's fine. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah. So I almost feel like this is like, uh, what does Natalie learn this week type of, type of segment? Um, I know we have newbie nuggets with Wendy. It says, what does Natalie learn this week? Um, and this week I learned about the importance of the width that you get for either your all-terrain or your off-road tire. So in my case, um, you know, I, I just did a new build, a rebuild on mine. Um, and so I went up to 37s with a, what I thought was a 13 and a half or 13.50. Right. So, um, you know, I get it, I'm all excited. We're at Smokey, I'm having a great time and go to another event. I'm teaching a class and, you know, talking about tire size and, start really looking and I was like, huh, that says 12.50 on that tire. Um, but I thought nothing of it at first. Well, it really does make a difference. So I brought it up to Mike and he was like, oh no, only time I've ever messed up right now. So, um, <laughs> only, time, did accidentally... only time somebody can prove it is what he's, <laughs> right? what he's saying. <laughs> so, right away. Um, you know, we did a, you know, we did another order and those big Maxis 37 razors came in and I'm so excited. So they came in and the guy sent me some photos of the Jeep on the rack and they were putting the, the new one, the new, new ones on. Um, and I could not believe the difference when you put them side by side of uh, really that inch really does matter. Um, insert every joke. Um, if you all are listening here, I get oh, I see, it. I see what you did there when you said insert yeah. uh, the joke. It, oh, oh God, I, I, I walked into that. Oh my gosh. So well, it really um, is big then. It um, is. so it's like a speed bump. <laughs> oh my gosh, so, here we go. <laughs> so you were teaching a class now. I don't I know. I mean, I think that the wider tires look better. They certainly are going to be better in mud or sand because yes. it's wider, but how does a, a, a wider tire help you in general? Cause I would think 12 and a half is just fine. Might look a little you know, funny. Yeah. I mean, I ran a 12 and a half on my all-terrain, my 35 all-terrains for years, mm -hmm. um, and I felt fine. I was doing mostly everything that my big brothers were doing, mm -hmm. um, but it's going to cover more surface area. The tread is a little bit, the tread is wider as well. Sure. Um, so I am looking forward to feeling <laughs> the difference. Mm -hmm. God, it's getting worse. Um, but I, I mean, so just seeing them side by side really did show me the difference. Um, we're doing a shakedown next week. We're heading to Slade. So Slate, Kentucky and Red River Gorge. So there's going to be lots of mud. We're, we are getting the tropical storm 
uh, remnants coming up here. See how it does in the mud. But um, we will have. A, I'm going to send a picture to Tony, guys. So you guys will see a picture Absolutely. of them side by side. But I thought it was an interesting, you know, little deal that the width really does make a difference. And yes, it does look uh, better. I yeah. think that wider. Um, well, I got to take it last I, night. For I the can first see time, that you're so. going to get more traction. I mean, like I already mentioned, yes. like if you're in mud, it, it gives you more flotation, so you're not getting down into the mud as far. Um, it de- of course, it depends on how much how much skinny pedal you're using. Uh, and yeah. the sand, I could imagine that would make a big difference, um, especially if you air down, because then uh, that 13 and a half just gives you that much more surface area. It and, does. And we all know that you have to air down when you go, when you're going off road, especially in oh, sand. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think that's true. I think that's right. That you, yeah, That's what you want you in do. sand. Um, I'll, I'll go down to about eight PSI. When we were in Sand Hollow, everybody was running around eight PSI because it was such a mix of the rock and the really deep sand. And there were always times like we'd be going up into these dunes and people would bury because they wouldn't either keep momentum or they just weren't aired down enough. Right. So uh, airing down really is important. It's so important oh, to and, find that sweet spot. And I'll just mention, I'll remind people, the the 22-inch uh, wheels with the rubber band tires uh, may yeah. look nice to you or you think they look cool and modern and everything, but you can't air one of those things down enough to make a, yeah. a difference in your traction. So if you have a Jeep and you're not, running a tire and a wheel uh, that has uh, a lot of sidewall to it, people that go off-road know that it's not going to be a good vehicle for off-road. It's not it meant to go off-road. So no matter how much crap you hang off of it. You might get through one or two times. Yeah. 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 Or how many lights you put on it. <laughs> right. No, well, you just gone too far there. Lights are cool. Yeah. Or cool. <laughs> <laughs> so um you know, i want more lights on mine i just told mike that today i was like we need more lights on it <laughs> so have you have you you've driven it uh, with the new tires right i have last night and today did you notice time, any so. difference just driving down the street uh i don't know if it was in my head like i felt bigger yeah, to be yeah. honest i i don't know why um Maybe I think also it's just it has the 500 miles on it now. I just I'm almost at 600. Oh, oh cool. Uh, so it's just getting more broken in too. So it is feeling good. So did you do the diff uh, the diff fluid change at 500? They did. Yeah, it was great. Um, so the guys did it, and uh, Tom, thank you, Tom, uh, for doing that, and um, and did the and the and did the tires yesterday. So. Here no, no whine from the from the gears, the new gears and the uh, the axles. No, uh, not really. Bits. The only. The only thing I know, no, uh, the only thing I've noticed is uh, shifting is a little bit different now because oh, the new five thirteens. I was, sure. I'm not used to that. Uh, I, bet you so it's, I bet you it's very snappy. It, it can be, yeah. But then there's times I feel like I'm just like stuck in third because uh, I do a, a lot of highway uh, commuting from Kentucky up to the Ohio, and um, so I'm on the highway a lot. So I'm going around sixty five, seventy, um, and this thing is just not. She doesn't want to. Uh, so Mike gave me a good tidbit today. He told me to start doing manual shifting. Uh, and that really likes it. The JKs like that on the highway. So, oh, I'm um, thinking about the eight speed uh, automatic and the uh, the JL and the the JT. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I was really surprised by that because I wouldn't think you would have any kind of uh, issues on the highway uh, with 37s and uh, five five thirteens. Yeah, is what you said. I feel heavy. Yeah, I feel heavy. Um, but maybe and that's just me getting used to it. Right. Um, and I do have the uh, MBRP exhaust, and she's she's loud. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry to my neighbors, uh, especially early in the morning when I'm leaving for work, but everyone knows I'm coming. <laughs> so it's fun. But yeah, the width, the, the tire width, guys, it's a great thing to really educate yourself and learn about. And there really is a difference. There is a difference. And a customer called me out on it too. Um, actually, John Sabo from There Goes Action Sports. We've talked about them before with their Bob Bed Gladiator, um, High Lift Build, of course. And he was like, no, it's just so weird. You did the 12 and a half and not a 13 and a half. And I was like, oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's what I wanted. <laughs> now, now these are so, these are Maxis thanks, tires, right? The twelve and a half are Maxis they tires. Are. Where they the are. hell was Rosie checking to make I sure know, you Rosie. were getting the right <laughs> tires? <laughs> we were at Four Fest freezing together. We didn't even notice. So <laughs> she's Baja right now. <laughs> very very cool. Well, I mean, you got the right size tires on there. Oh, what are you going to do yes. uh, with the the set that was on there? I'm sure somebody um, would like to have those. I mean, what yeah, they, they are, they've got less than 500 miles on them, right? Oh, yeah. They only had um, 425. Yeah. And it was all highway. Like, it's like they were clean, actually. And so, it, was, uh, it was your grandmother that was driving the Jeep while uh, on those was. tires. <laughs> it was. <laughs> they are available at High Life Off Road, guys. Check them out. Uh, scratch and I'll dent even sale. I'll sign them for you. How about that? <laughs> Scra- is it a scratch and dent, potential scratch and dent sale there at uh, High Left with these tires? You never there know. You go. Mike's always Mike. Mike's you know he's easy to talk to. You guys wheeling so and dealing, wheeling, wheeling and dealing. 
Enslaved. Or if you're Enslaved on the 5th, we'll be down there. You'll see Red down there. So come come pay us a visit. So, Natalie, are you a coffee yeah. drinker or tea or? Duh. If you're on YouTube, <laughs> you can see it. So a must-have stuff for your Jeep. Yes, you need the ability to make coffee from your Jeep. I yes, mean, absolutely. How many times have you been, you're driving down the highway, you go, I yeah. need me some coffee, and you look up and you see that Bucky sign, 795 miles to the next Bucky's. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> they really do have some, some, uh, some out there. I think the one I've seen far enough, uh, the farthest one I've ever seen is like 80 miles or something. And I'm like, holy shit. Uh, and I think they do that because you go, well, I'm not going to stop at that McDonald's because I only have another 50 miles to go for yes. Bucky's. That, and I've done it. I, there, yeah. we have our, we have one here. It's an hour and 45 minutes away from my house. And honestly, people still just go from here. Just go get the jerky, go get a coffee. Why not? Pickled garlic, the actual garlic cloves pickled. Oh boy. Try that sometimes. Okay. Is that um, Bucky's? Yes, Absolutely. And uh, you guys are the birthplace of Bucky's, so you would know. Oh, yeah. We have one that's about, uh, well, I live in Katy. Uh, this is where Studio A is in Southeast oh, Texas. Boy. And uh, Katy got a Bucky's about maybe maybe three, four years ago. So oh, okay. there's a, a very large Bucky's about, eh, I guess it's about five miles from here. Um, yeah. And sometimes I'll go over there just to get a, a barbecue sandwich. It's not, oh, yeah. it's not the best barbecue, but it is good barbecue. Certainly good barbecue for a gas station. It's, at the end of the day, it's still a gas station. Yes. yes. <laughs> I mean, let's be real. I don't mind. How many pumps? Yeah. Oh, God. How many pumps does that one have? Oh, God. I don't know. The Gatlinburg um, one was 126, I think. It, like, might, it was crazy. It might be that many. Uh, it, oh, my God. It's, it's, it's very wide. And also, too, you go in there and I'm like, what the hell? It's not any kind yeah. of special day. It's so busy. Why? Why is it <laughs> it's so like Black busy? It's Friday every day. So somebody sold the, sold their soul to the devil. I, I, I mean, Duck Bucky's is neat. I like it. Yeah. But it doesn't seem to me to, to be that uh, impressive. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> so let's say <laughs> you don't want to wait that 127 miles before but getting to Bucky's. You have yeah. to have some coffee now. Well, Makita <laughs> has a coffee maker that's battery powered. No, it's not 27 D size batteries. You actually take one of your Makita tool batteries, like a five amp hour battery. You slap it on this Makita coffee maker. And this is kind of the depressing thing. <laughs> you can make <laughs> three five ounce cups of coffee. And uh, it takes about five, uh, five minutes for each cup uh, off of a, uh, a, a single five amp hour battery, uh, LXT battery. So, uh, and this does not come with the, the battery or the charger, but if you already have a key to tools, no. this is, you know, you'd want to buy but this. You should already have it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You already got the batteries. So, uh, I just thought this would be so cool to have. Now there are other 12 volt, uh, coffee makers, but this one is kind of rugged, uh, it is rugged. you know, set up and, uh, it's not, some of the other ones kind of look like they ought to be on the kitchen counter, but they're still 12 volt. <laughs> Uh, so there's alternatives to this, but this has a cool aspect uh, to it. Yeah, you weren't aware of this uh, before the seeing it in the show notes, right? I wasn't. It looks like a ammo can, you yes. know, like the metal. It looks like that. It's cool. I don't yeah. know what this motion really means, but that's okay. It's a it's a tactical <laughs> coffee maker. Tactical, yes. There, they, thank you. There it is. <laughs> so it is a bit pricey. It's a hundred and forty four dollars. And that does not come with a battery. Batteries are yeah, not let's, included. Let's stress that. <laughs> not included. No. <laughs> but hopefully you already have the Makita tools. And now I did look to see if there were any De DeWalt coffee makers because Ooh, that's yeah. the tools that I go with. I mean, there's no sense yeah. in buying a cornucopia of different uh, manufacturers uh, all that's having true. their own separate batteries. So, uh, but, but I did not see anything from DeWalt. And in fact, when I was uh, looking at a YouTube. Yeah. Well, I was looking at a YouTube video for this Makita and they were yeah. like, you know, uh, it's a, it's a coffee maker from Akita. Why? <laughs> and I, I kind of agree. Like, why? Yeah. But it is really cool. I can see somebody out on the job site going That's up. That's what I was just thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Going up and fixing a cup of coffee. Hey man, where'd you get that cup of coffee? Oh, I'm glad you asked that. Here you go. Look at yeah. this. <laughs> and by the oh, end of the day, God. it's stolen. <laughs> Do you think it comes with the mug that's in the photo? 
I feel like it has to come with the mug, right? Well, let's see. Um, I brew five ounce cup of coffee in five minutes. It's powered by an 18 volt uh, LXT battery. Battery sold separately. Brews up to three five ounce cups of coffee on a single five amp battery. Uh, no paper filters needed. Permanent drip filter allows grounds to pour directly into the coffee maker. That's nice. Uh, uses That's- single serve packs uh, or ground coffee. Ah, I like that too. So it does not say, but it's certainly in the picture. Yeah, that would be. I know, but I bet it doesn't. Let's be honest. That would be horrible. (laughs) Now you could probably go to Bucky's and get a cup that would uh, that would fit this. (laughs) They do have all sizes. It was all about the size this episode, wasn't it? (laughs) Uh, It always is. I know. (laughs) So we have uh, we have uh, the uh, the link to Amazon, so you can buy one of these things. If you do buy one, we want to hear from you uh, because I I think this would be a cool item. If I had uh, infinite funds, I'd definitely buy one. Yeah. Uh, and, and 27 batteries just so I could keep making coffee. Right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Cheers, everyone. <laughs> All right. Well, it's always a little sad when we hit the end of the trail. Oh, and real quick, um, uh, we had, I had a couple of people, uh, not initially complain, but make comment. Oh, oh, the episode was a little shorter than usual. And I said, uh, yeah, I, I told, uh, it was a, a, an episode I recorded with Wendy. I think it was, uh, yeah. uh last, uh, last Tuesday's episode or this, uh, uh, yeah, last Tuesday's episode. And uh, I said, yeah, I told Wendy it might be a little short. Uh, we only had about, uh, I think we only had the one news story. And I told yeah. her, don't worry about it. We'll just have fun. We'll see how long it goes. And uh, I think we did about uh, 35 minutes or something. Nice. So uh, this okay. one, this one's a little short too, but it's uh, it's not 30 minutes. We're looking at about 42 minutes right now. Uh, oh. And uh, that's, that's what you get here. Sometimes it goes over an hour. Sometimes yeah. it's right at an hour. Sometimes it's, it's less than an hour. But exactly. uh, there's a lot of episodes that you can listen to. There yeah. is. Make sure you guys sure, make sure you check out Chick Chat on Mondays. <laughs> our lady listeners and men and, and all our oh, men. Oh, you got so. a lot. You got a lot of men that are uh, listening to that too. Really enjoying the new format and listening to you oh, guys uh, chat about stuff. Um, oh, I'm glad. So uh, as I was saying, it's always a little sad when we end uh, yes. uh, at the end of the show or the end of the trail, but there's always another trail ride uh, down the road, just like there's another show down the road. Jeep Talk <laughs> Show has five episodes a week, Monday through Friday. Chick Chat is on Mondays, every Monday. Subscribe and never miss an episode. Hey, speaking of subscribing, consider keeping the Jeep Talk Show on the air by subscribing to the show via Patreon. The place to go for all the information on how to subscribe and how to uh, contact us is at jeeptalkshow.com slash contact. Uh, you were mentioning where you're going to be. Uh, is there a place people yeah. can, can go and see you? Do you still have the Jeep Talk Show stickers? I, I think you only had 50. I do. Um, I do. And I'll be at Hollerwood Park on October the 5th doing my shakedown run of Big Red. So come out and see us, guys. We'll be there starting around 9 a.m. Uh, hitting the trails. Is there a place they can go to get more information about that? Or is there, uh, is it just you just no, going? This, or is honestly, it... guys, this is just, a, this is just us going. It's myself and Matt Moss, our, our lead, um, and my, okay. So my it's not, it's not like an so event, but the, it is not, anybody's it's welcome more, to show up. Let's get Natalie back on the trail. It's been almost a year, um, not in, in, in my own Jeep. So right. here we are. So it's going to be fun. It's going to be a show. So come on out. It makes a big um, difference then, when it's your Jeep, doesn't it? I mean, it's fun it driving is. any Jeep, but when it's your yes. Jeep, it makes a big difference. Absolutely. But I will say October the 12th, the following weekend, we are back at Hollerwood for the Ohio River Four Wheelers Jeep Club and Kentucky Crawlers um, Jeep Club cleanup ride and meet and greet preparation. The meet and greet's coming up um, at the end of October, 1st of November. So here we are. We'll talk about that coming up. But that is open to everyone. That one's on a secret ride. <laughs> so it's not a secret um, anymore, is it? I just told everybody everything. So here we are. <laughs> So where's those NDAs? <laughs> is there is there anything going on with uh, high lift off road that uh, you wanted to mention real quick? I mean, if not, that's fine. Uh, we're just doing you know just those couple rides, and then we have the meet and greet, and then Mike and I are off to SEMA. So if you're at SEMA, I'll be seeing Julianne. Oh, that's really right. excited. November is yeah. SEMA. That's right. I forgot about that. It's that's coming. That's soon. So Very soon. It is. And then Black Friday will be here before we know it. And high lift always has the best deals on Black Friday. So. Um, stay tuned for more information on that. Highliftoffroad.com. And uh, you don't have to have a Black Friday to check it out. Check it out now. You don't. And our new apparel just went live today, guys. Join the crew. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you very much for being here with us, Natalie. Hope you guys enjoy thank Natalie. You. I really enjoy her being here as part of the show. Oh, thank you. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll we'll hearing you again here on uh, this coming Monday for Chick Chat. Yeah. Can't oh, actually, wait, guys. actually I got the dates wrong. We've already heard oh. from you yesterday. Oh. Because today's Tuesday. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> it's okay. <laughs> that was real confusing when we started uh, recording in the future. <laughs> All right. Have a great night. Thank you very much. Bye, guys. Broadcasting since 2010. <laughs> I'm so bummed. No cats made an appearance. That's right. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> You're my friend. You're my new friend. <laughs>